Hello all, welcome to this session. In this session, I'm going to answer software testing interview question 117. That is, what are the different types of prototypes? Let me answer. Before I explain the different types of prototypes, let's first understand what exactly is prototype. Prototype is nothing but developing a working replication which mimics the actual software that needs to be engineered or developed, okay? The way before the developers develop this actual software as per the requirements and all, the developers have to create an actual software and release it into the market, right? So before that actual software is developed by developers, the development team will develop a working replication, a working simulation, which is not the real one. It's not a real or actual software. It's a dummy one, okay? It's a dummy one created way before the actual one is created. What is the purpose? Why the developers have to create this working replication or working simulation of a real software before the real software is getting developed, which will take a lot of time. The advantage or purpose here is to create the prototype is to get the early feedback from customers, okay? Customers cannot wait for the complete software to be developed till the end of the SDLC phases or whatever it is that customers cannot wait. And also by the time the customers wait and give the feedback that will be too late. So to overcome that problem, developers will create a dummy, okay, dummy replica. It's a replica or simulation kind of, of the actual software, which will generally take very less time for the developers to create this guys, okay? For the developers to create actual software, it will take a lot of time. But for creating a replica or a dummy simulation thing, which looks similar to the actual software, it generally takes less time for the developers. So such kind of prototype will be created by the developers and will be shared with the customers in the early stages of the projects and the customers will give you the feedback. So once the developers will get a early feedback, now based on the feedback, the development team and the project team will go in a proper direction, okay? They know where they are heading to, whether they are creating a proper software or not, they'll come to know, okay? So that is what is the advantage of the early feedback is, okay? That's what is a prototype and the purpose of the prototype and advantage of the prototype. But there are different types of prototypes that are generally created throughout the projects. What are the different type of prototypes available? We have rapid throwaway prototype as one type. Then we have incremental prototype, extreme prototype, and evolutionary prototype. What are these different prototypes? Let me explain. Coming to the rap rapid throwaway prototype case. So when it will be created and uh, what exactly it means, I'll explain now. So coming to the first type of prototype that is rapid uh, throwaway prototype. So this is this prototype is generally created in the projects for exploring the ideas and getting feedback and customers about finalizing the requirements. Okay, it's all about requirements, guys. Okay, so you see in the beginning of the project, uh, the team will the the client client side people will ideate about the requirements, right? So so what requirements need to be finalized for the software and all, but uh, visually they cannot imagine like uh, what the software will be built out of that. Okay, it will be purely in the form of textual textual representation, mostly in the presentation format or whatever it is, but they cannot visualize the actual software and they cannot derive the proper requirements or they cannot derive the proper ideas for the software. To overcome that problem, okay, to overcome the problem at the initial stage, when the project is in, in there in the initial stage while they are finalizing the requirements, right? They will create this kind of prototype known as rapid throwaway prototype. So with the help of the prototype, the, the team will Okay, ideate about the requirements. Okay, ideate about the requirements and get quick feedback on the requirements, whatever they have gathered so far. Okay, so that is rapid throwaway prototype. As the name speaks, as the name speaks, these prototypes are not accepted. Okay, the, uh, whatever the during this process of uh, finalizing a prototype, the team will create a lot of prototypes. And if the prototype is not accepted, that will be thrown away rapidly, very quickly. They will reject the prototype, and the next prototypes will be evaluated until. Until their prototype is finalized, uh, quickly they keep on, uh, you know, right, uh, creating the prototypes and uh, kind of thing. Okay, so until the prototypes are accepted, they keep on thrown away. The uh, not accepted prototypes will be thrown away rapidly. Okay, that's why the name is rapid throwaway prototype, and uh, it's all about finalizing the requirements. Okay, it's all about uh, during the ideation phase of the requirements, where uh, quick feedback can be received and uh, by the customers, and uh, they can finalize the requirements. Okay, that's what is the purpose of this prototype. And now we have the second type of prototype that is incremental prototype. So in this incremental prototype, what strategy will be followed is, so you see, if you talk about a entire application, guys, an entire application will contain a lot of components, right? Different areas of the application will be different components of the application will be there. 
so for each and every component a separate small prototype instead of creating a large single prototype what the team will do is they will for each and every component of the application they will create a separate small prototype okay till the end of the pro, uh, like the pro, when, while the project is going on they keep on creating small prototypes for smaller sections of the application and finally and when time comes when uh, all the prototypes smaller prototypes of the application are ready for each and individual components of the application all the smaller prototypes will be merged into a single prototype single final prototype at the end so finally the final prototype will appear at the end but uh, initially the small prototypes will be created and uh, finally they will be merged into the final prototype at the end okay so what is advantage here why why to follow this kind of incremental prototype approach here guys so by creating the small prototypes for individual components of the application the customers okay will get proper feedback from the customers okay customers get an opportunity to provide feedback on individual developed components instead of providing the feedback at a high level okay now customers can look into the smaller prototypes and give the feedback respect to the application functionalities or uh, respect to the developed components they can give the feedback okay so that's what is the, that's what is the advantage of incremental prototype guys okay so instead of giving the feedback at a higher level the customers can now give the feedback at the component level okay component level and uh, this collective feedback feedback will be more powerful than the the higher level feedback that is given on the higher level prototype okay that's why incremental prototype model is approach followed in some projects okay for getting this kind of advantages now extreme prototype coming to the extreme prototype the extreme prototype mainly contain three phases okay when you talk about extreme prototype this extreme proto prototype contain three phases so that is first phase second phase and third phase in the first phase what will be created is a prototype will be created but how it will be created you see first in the first phase of this extreme prototype model prototype using static pages in html format is created okay it's not a real application but a static pages okay which are not dynamic okay static pages will be created uh, using the html pages okay html html code will be written for creating such kind of static pages and uh, this uh, this static pages right this uh, set of static pages will act like a prototype okay which is not real one okay not real working of the application it's a prototype having the static pages a very static pages and uh, just having a feel of okay, okay how the prototype will that is the first phase only the second phase what they will do is they will simulate the data process okay they will make sure the uh, like uh, to this static web pages prototype to this static pages prototype they will add the they will simulate the data process so that uh, customers can even uh, use this prototype to enter the credentials let's assume uh, earlier in the first phase they created a static page for login username password and login button is there the second phase they will add the data okay so they will uh, they will append the they will simulate the data processing like uh, they will give some the, the team who is creating the prototype will give you some data so that data if you enter into the static pages that will be accepted okay so only that particular data will be accepted so mimicking some data process will be done at the okay at the second uh, phase uh, you see simulate data process using the above prototype service layer okay the team will use the service layer of the static pages uh, uh, to this earlier prototype and uh, they will uh, they will make make that uh, this particular static pages prototype will accept some kind of data now coming to the third phase guys okay coming to the third phase now they will add all the uh, code okay all the services real services will be added uh to this finalized prototype uh, and this this kind of adding will help the developers in going uh, going towards the actual web development okay so this is the third phase of prototype so this is called as extreme prototype which will go to the extreme levels like this okay first will be very static pages then data will be accepted then actual code will be actual service code okay server uh, server side services code will be appended to this prototype so that uh, this will lead to the proper development okay so this is what is extreme prototyping now finally we have the last one evolutionary prototype you see the name evolutionary means it will get evolved over a period of time right evolutionary means any, any in real world evolutionary means it will evolve over a period of time so this prototype uh, will evolve over a period of time okay in the, during the project uh, the beginning of the project the prototype will be in some state and while the project continues it keeps on evolving okay keeps on imp improving itself okay incrementally it will evolve okay over a period of time and uh, it will keep on collecting the feedback this particular prototype will keep on collecting the feedback uh, from customers every time every increment okay so so until it reaches a final stage it keeps on evolving okay useful when the requirements are not clear or not understood in the initial stages okay the uh, the requirements of uh, for developing the software are not clear or not uh, specific the beginning of the phases so such kind of teams use this uh, evolving kind of prototype where they keep on collecting the feedback from the customer so that uh, they know what exactly need to be developed okay 
for such kind of cases evolutionary prototype is required for such kind of projects so hope guys you understood uh, the different type of prototypes and what exactly is prototype and what are the different type of prototypes like rapid throw away, pro throw away prototype incremental prototype extreme prototype and evolutionary prototype in this session so that's all for this session in the next session i'm going to answer another software testing interview question for you till then see you bye bye